the universe, comets cause massive destruction. They could be moving 50 or more times faster than a rifle bullet. And you were talking about something the size of a mountain. So the amount of energy that this thing would release upon impact is devastating. But they're not always destructive. They have another side. Scientists believe they can shape entire worlds. This is Titan, the largest of Saturn's moons. It's the only moon in our solar system with a thick atmosphere. Rivers and lakes of liquid methane cover its surface. Titan was transformed by comets. Radar images reveal a moon shaped by a blizzard of comets that rained down over millions of years. Each comet vaporized when it hit, releasing gases from inside its nucleus. Gradually, they built up a rich organic atmosphere and this strange liquid landscape. Comets turned a space rock into an Earth-like world. Comets, in some sense, are the ultimate engineers of the solar system. Cometary impacts could give us the chemicals which give us the atmosphere, not just of Titan, but even perhaps the Earth itself. So if comets have the power to reshape entire worlds, what part did they play in the history of our own planet? To find out, we need to get closer to a comet than ever before. We need to land on one. In March 2004, the Rosetta mission launched. The Rosetta mission is named after the Rosetta Stone because just like the stone gave linguists the keys to the ancient language, we're hoping that the comet will give us the keys to understanding the ancient solar system. November 11, 2014 will be a landmark in space exploration. For the very first time, a spacecraft will touch down on the surface of a comet. Previous missions to comets were basically flybys, and they basically give us tantalizing evidence that there was a greater mystery yet to be solved. Now we're going to land on a comet. We're going to be up close and dirty with a live comet streaming through outer space. And this is unprecedented. Rosetta is around the size of a car. It's flying through space at 20,000 miles per hour. It's heading for this. A comet with a nucleus three miles wide, orbiting the sun every six and a half years. A robotic lander will drop down to the surface, beginning the most detailed study of a comet ever attempted. It's going to look at what the surface looks like. It's going to take samples. It's going to look at the terrain. It's going to be able to actually probe inside the comet and see what it's made of and how it's put together. We're hopefully going to learn more from this mission about one comet than we have about just everything we've, we've known about comets for, for centuries. Rosetta should answer some very simple questions. Is it porous? Is it like a sponge? Is it like uh, a bunch of tubes? Is it like a, a, a snowflake, you know, with this sort of uh, fairy castle structure? Uh, these things will help us to understand how the heat flows within and maybe what causes certain portions of it to become a, a jet and other portions not. But this is just the beginning. For an entire year, Rosetta will study the comet on its epic journey round the sun. Using technology so advanced, it mimics the five human senses. 
We've got uh, instruments that can see. We've got a kind of an ultrasound experiment. Instruments that are the equivalent of your hands. So we'd like to understand everything possible about this comet's journey around the sun from when it's quiet to when it's at its most active. But we'll have to get there first. Just to reach the comet, scientists must overcome enormous technical challenges. Rosetta must hit a target just three miles wide, traveling at 34,000 miles per hour. Landing on it will be even harder. Comets have very little gravity. There's not anything that you know is going to pull you down to the surface. Uh, and there's no atmosphere, so you can't unfurl a, a parachute and just sail to the, down until you touch down. You've got to figure out a way to uh, get your, tar your, your lander uh, to actually reside and rest on the surface. Technicians have an ingenious solution. The lander is equipped with shock absorbers and a harpoon. When it makes contact with the surface, at the same time, the harpoon will be released down into the substrate and it will have prongs that will open that will prevent it from coming back up. Rosetta will attempt to solve some of science's deepest mysteries. We would very much like to know why is it that Earth has liquid water and so much of it compared to any place else that we've ever seen. So how is it that the water got here? Now there is a theory that says that comets delivered the water to the Earth long ago. But the question is, can we actually prove it? To find out, the lander will collect water molecules to compare with water from Earth. But scientists hope to go even further. We're on the brink of making an extraordinary discovery. We may find proof that life itself has an extraterrestrial origin. That it was brought to Earth by comets. Life has existed on our planet for at least three and a half billion years. But we still don't understand its beginnings. We used to think life originated on Earth itself. That volcanic gases and water vapor formed oceans and an atmosphere. Lightning added the creative spark for early life to begin. Now we think that's wrong, and the evidence is in space. In 1997, Comet Hale-Bopp appeared, one of the biggest and brightest comets ever recorded. Scientists found it was packed with water, gases, and carbon, the basic ingredients for life. That discovery raised profound questions. We're all used to the idea that life originated here on Earth, and it probably did, at least complex life. But where did the building blocks come from? Where did the water that makes up our body, the organic molecules that make up the very essence of life, they actually may not have been intrinsically part of the Earth to begin with. They came from somewhere else. Hale Bopp suggested that the raw materials for life might have an extraterrestrial origin. Since then, scientists have found further evidence. Astrobiologist Dante Loretta discovered that dust from Comet Vilt 2 contained minerals that could only form in heat and liquid water. We had the sulfide minerals, we had iron oxides, we had carbonate minerals, which are the same kind of materials that marine organisms use to build their shells, unlike anything we thought was possible to be formed in the early solar system. Scientists have even found that comet Vilt 2 contains amino acids. 
That's incredibly exciting because amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and pro proteins are essential biomolecules for all life on Earth. These discoveries have transformed our understanding of comets. Many scientists now believe they're more than just frozen time capsules. Perhaps they play a central role in the history of our planet. We have learned from the study of a single comet and the results of the Stardust mission that they are complex chemical laboratories where the ingredients of life could form. These materials likely did not arise naturally on the surface of the Earth from processes on our planet. Instead, they had to be delivered by these messengers from the outer solar system. The idea that we may owe our existence to comet impacts is astounding, but not everyone is convinced. There's pretty good circumstantial evidence that a comet might have been important to life. But we don't really have, you know, if we're CSI, if we're the comet science investigators trying to prove it, we haven't got the proof lined up yet. It's quite possible that what we have out there has nothing to do with life as we know it on Earth. Scientists hope the Rosetta mission will resolve the issue. If we can establish a correlation between amino acids on comets and the amino acids we have on Earth, life on Earth, uh, that would be one of the most significant findings in, uh, in science. The story of life on Earth began four and a half billion years ago. When our planet formed, it was a barren, hostile world. 700 million years later, the solar system plunged into turmoil. Gravity ripped comets from their orbits and hurled them in all directions, many into the inner solar system. They rained down on the early Earth for 300 million years. They released gases and organic material, creating an atmosphere and the oceans. Finally, life could begin. It's a dramatic story. But is it true? Only time is going to tell, if we keep studying these mysterious objects, whether or not we can really pin down exactly the mechanisms and find out how it all got started. In a hundred years' time, hopefully we'll look back and say, wouldn't it be cool to have been a living at that time, to be a witness, to be one of the first to make these incredible discoveries? In the meantime, the search for proof continues. I can't say for sure if comets brought all of these raw ingredients to the earth and that we evolved from these materials but it's certainly possible and it's absolutely poetic to think that we came from out there